Friends, we've got a problem. It's a good problem, steep learning curve, but good problem. Garage door, it's getting installed Thursday. I've actually finished, finished framing the opening so that the opening is the correct size. I used some smaller lumber on the sides, had to go with a, a two by six on the top. But what I didn't realize is you have to build basically an H frame with a two by 12 in the middle for the spring and all that. So I gotta do that, learning curve, we're getting through it. Likely be easier with help, but if I started reaching out for help, then I'd have to wait for someone to show up. And uh, that just adds time to projects. Yes, I'm gonna nail it in. Okay, so we've got one upright on. A second upright on. I guess it's kind of hard to see. Um, now we just got to do the piece. Now we just got to do the piece. Now we just got to do the piece across. And then we can put the, uh, the 2x12 up. And then I'll throw on some flashing. And now uprights, the uh, across, the 2x12, all the reinforcements are in. The flashing is on. I put J channel and put like a little three quarter inch gap because I think it looks good all the way across. This large hole in a wall is, as far as I'm concerned, complete and ready for a large door to go in. And if it's not, everything I've looked up on the internet, garage door installers are very good at dealing with problems and working around them. I wish, I wish I could figure out how to put flashing on so that it doesn't, anyway, I'm not gonna waste time with that. Look at that, look at it, it's in. That is awesome. This exists. This is, this is a almost complete wall. Just need that thing. And I will not even begin to lie. I am so grateful that I did not have to even attempt to put this in. Overhead doors came, put it in, like the guy was here for two and a half hours and he was done. He was like, yeah, it's just me. Imagine if I tried to do, like I second guessed everything and that would all be new. It would not, it wouldn't be done. $300 install, well worth the price of entry. Entry. Norton is here up against that black backdrop and it's bright green glory with its new stem on. We'll talk about that in a second. But the focus now is because, I know it's dark in here, but as I wait for the man door to finish the siding up front, cause it'll have the J channel built into it. Can't really do any more siding without that. The focus now is uh, to get rid of the six foot wide ramps and go pick up the lumber to do the 12 foot wide ramps. And hopefully with any good planning, luck not involved, that'll be done by next week. I wanna get the ramp done and ready and have like all my friends over, even with the door not done. I'll, uh, I'll cover that, I'll build some sort of makeshift thing and uh, run some extension cords in here with heaters and everything. And hopefully there's enough of us riding the ramp enjoying ourselves, having a good time to, uh, to gather around the Christmas holidays. My favorite, absolute favorite thing to do. And uh, just, just get everyone together, have the first ramp session, uh, well, first of many, I hope. So if that resonates with you, bikes, indoor ramp, friends, garage, cool garage space, you really should subscribe. This space is going to be, it's gonna be cool. Now, more exciting news. I love getting stuff. Norton, Norton's got his new stem. And actually, I think it's worth noting that uh, Norton also inherited the new dropper post instead of Mr. Relatable because uh, there wasn't enough seat post insertion on the new steel full suspension. So I had to swap between Norton and the new steel bike.
which I actually think might be more beneficial on this thing to have way more drop on it because now this is almost all the way to the bottom. Maybe I'm just saying that to make myself feel a little less stupid about spending the money I did without doing any proper research. But I think what we need to do as we fight daylight is uh, finish off by trying out the new stem and dropper. So I've come back to the ever famous lake jump. Feel free to correct that in the comments. It makes me laugh. I've got a very funny camera set up on my back with an Insta360 X2, one X2. I, I don't know if this is actually gonna work. I find these things can be a little bit glitchy when things start to like shake around too much. So I'm basically just gonna speed run this whole thing all the way to the end and cut hopefully this footage and the GoPro footage together and hopefully it's like somewhat enjoyable to watch. Based on how close that excavator is to the trail, I would say this might be the last time that we get to hit that drop or even do the lake jump. So RIP lake jump. And speed run begin. I can't believe I rode this on the side neck. Pretty fun and a good way a good way to cap off two and a half ish days of uh working and accomplishing things oh i'm sorry i'm sorry about that really hope that a little bit of that footage from the 360 camera came out because i just picturing it making it a lot more interesting to watch the new stem was uh uneventful i guess i would say actually don't notice a lot of difference between the way it rode I know a lot of people say a shorter stem will make your steering feel and blah. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It's funny the way my opinion has evolved as I've gotten more and more away from like being on road bikes or drop bar bikes and more onto mountain bikes where, where I've gone from like long slam stems are sick to like short stubby positive rise stems are sick. Okay, see you tomorrow, maybe.